Hi, ladies. Welcome back to another Super Sunday class. We now have two super duper rock stars who are crushing their party calendars here to share with you all the tips they can squeeze into an hour to help you get bookings, whether they're virtual or in person, you're going to be able to apply this. So Sandy and Lauren, take it away. Awesome. Perfect. Welcome, everybody. Hi, Lauren. Hello. All right. So we are going to talk to you guys all about bookings today. And Lauren and I, uh, well, I'll, I'll go with what I've done and then Lauren can kind of introduce herself. Um, I know everything has been kind of up in the air with like the pandemic and our party calendars completely changed in March of 2020. And, you know, I started doing back in home parties in June. I went completely virtual for a few months. And then this past year, I think I did maybe three or four virtuals altogether. So everything else has been in person. Lauren, why don't you kind of tell us what you've kind of done? Um, I, so dur during the pandemic, I went as if like it's not over. <laughs> I say that. But um, tw I stopped doing parties uh, for several months, March through September, because I was pregnant during the pandemic. So I went back to... Um, in-person parties in September of 2020. Um, and that's what I've been doing ever since all through 2021. Um, very few virtual, so mostly in-person parties. And I've had a, a pretty booked calendar. Awesome. So we're going to kind of talk to you guys today about, I mean, mainly we're going to talk about the in-person side of things, because I do think that we are at a place in time, maybe not right this second, but we're heading back to more of an in-person life. But if you're choosing to do virtual because it works better in your life, you can still apply these techniques. So please don't feel like we're leaving you out of the conversation if you only want to do virtual or if you want to really balance calendar either way. Um, we do want to kind of want to talk about the difference in your outcomes if you're going to be virtual parties versus in-person parties. Um, Lauren, what would you say is, is the main difference between the two outcomes between virtual and in-person? So, I mean, and kind of, I mean, so what, I don't, what year did you start this business, Sandy? 2005. 2005. So we've been, I've been in since 2007. So we are old dogs. We've been doing parties forever. And that was just the way there. When, when we started, there was, I mean, very little to no social media. Like we didn't have we Facebook group. We had our Yahoo group. Like it just did not exist. And you had to get out, you had to hit the pavement and you had to do in-person parties. So, um, you know, I will say, and I'm sure that you have felt maybe the same way, like because we did that for so many years, it was a little bit of a harder transition to the virtual piece. But did we do it like old dogs could learn new tricks? Um, but what I have found is that and I'm, I'm sure many of you guys and you, you can let us know, like did um, when you do a virtual party, there is, you know, can they be great? Absolutely. But there's so many criteria that that you have to make sure that you cover. You have to typically do, you know, four, five, six virtual parties at once. You have to do tons of follow up beforehand, tons of follow up after um, after it. You know, multiple follow up hostess coaching. It's completely different. It is very time consuming. And if that works for you because you can't leave your house and that's just, you're really great at social media, then that's going to work for you. But what I have found is that, you know, the, the rarity of me having a one virtual party, that's a $2,000 party. Maybe that happened at the height of the pandemic when everybody was stuck inside. Um, people want to get out of their house now. Like it is so much easier to be like, oh yeah, sure. I'm coming. And then peace out and never actually watch that video. It's so much easier to ignore a private message. But when they're in the home at a party and experiencing it and, you know, they, they can't just get up and walk away, it's it's so incredibly different. So where a virtual party, you might get a sale here, two sales there, zero here, four here, you know, a lot of work to maybe get that. I say in-person parties are the biggest bang for your buck, like 100%. in, out, three, four hours, you know, um, depending how fast you do your party and you can sell 500, a thousand or more at that party. I mean, and I don't know about you, Lauren, but I've had my highest parties ever this past year. Um, in November of 2020, I did a $4,600 party in the middle of like a massive part of the pandemic. And I've had more two and $3,000 parties this year than I've ever had in my entire career. 
So yes, can you do virtual? Absolutely, like Lauren said. And especially if that's what your life is and that's your life constraints, completely. And we've learned it and there's a ton of training as to how to do that. The bigger bang for your buck is going to be the in-persons. I mean, just in truly, that's kind of where things land. Um, but either way will work. So please don't feel like whichever way you choose, or if you want to do a mixture of both, you know, please don't feel like you have to do one or the other. You, We've learned, especially throughout this, that you can do both. Um, those of you in winter climates, gosh, I mean, you're never going to have to deal with the snow cancellation again. You can switch it right to virtual. So that's, I mean, that's a huge deal that you're able to do now that we just didn't have those tools two, three years ago for. So um, now if you're wanting to do, whether it's in person or virtual, the one thing that we're both going to say, and I think we're both very huge advocates of, is you got to shadow some parties. Like you got to know what you're doing, right? <laughs> like, um, And you're going to want to look for several different consultants. So because you don't want to have the same personality only showcasing to you all the time, you're going to want to look for different consultants who you're going to take some from the one and take some from the other. It's kind of like a buffet. Um, maybe one person's style appeals to you more than somebody else's, but their joke on this one product works really well for you. So we're both going to, I mean, I would say shadow multiple parties and multiple consultants. Um, do the, you can shadow virtual parties. It's not that hard. We can have you into a virtual party, super easy. And then part shadowing in person is such a game changer because you're going to see every aspect of it, not just the party on the screen, but you're going to see how she comes in. You're going to see how she greets the hostess and how she greets the guests. You're going to see the shopping room aspect of things. Um, Lauren, do you have anything on that one? Um, no, I, I mean, it definitely is a totally different experience because we feel like, well, I watched a recording of a party, but there, I mean, the recording of a party, typically it's not like an actual party in progress. These are, I mean, for lack of a better term, like actors sitting there and compliant people. You can see what it's like to have a loud, crazy party. And how do you handle that? You know, the quiet party where nobody laughs at your jokes and it's very awkward. You know, it's because at the end of the day, it's, it's about connecting with people and like, how do I connect with different groups? Because every client group is going to be different. Seeing the ordering room, seeing how to, I mean, physically take an order, how to do the math, like all of that stuff, you know, is so incredibly important and people skip that step. Um, I will tell you that my top girls, they will, they will tell you that the best thing that they ever did was shadow, shadow multiple times, multiple people. But I mean, even just like it's, it's connecting with somebody who's been in business for a while, you know, cause they can ask all the questions, you know, at, right there in, in real time. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm seeing some comments and I'm seeing some posts about people wanting to get into the in-person parties. A lot of people have signed on during the pandemic time period, right? And virtual is all you ever learned. And people are saying, I want to do in person, but I don't even know where to start or I'm new to my area or I have no contacts here or anything else. So that's perfect segue into our next stop. Um, we're going to talk about that. Now, the number one way to do a party is having your own, right? You can have it at your house. And here's the thing, you guys, you will not cancel on yourself as long as you do the work that goes into it. Um, when we've, I've moved across country a couple of times. Um, so I've had to kind of start my business over several times over the years. And the one thing that does an amazing kickoff to your business is to host a party at your own house. You can start that every single month and then whittle it down as your party calendar gets more and more full. Um, but you can do it every month for the rest of your career if you wanted to. You really have that option. You can do it once a year, twice a year, whatever it is. But to start off, having a party at your house, it's, it's game changing because what you can do is you're now in control of who gets invited, right? So what do I mean by that? You're most likely not going to go to a town an hour and a half away to invite people to a party at your house. Where are you going to go? You're going to go to the businesses that surround you, to the local areas that are around you, and you're going to invite women who are local to you, which means they are then going to book and still be local to you. So that's like a huge benefit. Um, and how do you do that? So ideas. You can print out invitations and you can go to your local restaurants, just like Wanda was just talking about. Talk to the waitress there and say, hey, you know what? I am having a party at my house after you've done all that. I would love to invite you and the girls here to come. Here's a couple of invitations, four or five invites. Bring a couple of your own friends. Like you don't have to walk into a stranger's house. That's totally fine. Um, bring your friends in and let's have a great ladies night. 
you want to invite, you're going to find that you need to invite a lot more people when you're doing a party at your own house, right? Like you're just not going to get the same results. So if you have, I don't know, your own Pamper Chef party or something and you invite your 10 friends, probably eight of them are going to be able to come. That's not going to be the case when you're inviting strangers. So you want to aim to invite 50 to 100 women, again, in your local area. Pass those invitations out. Um, Laura, can you give some ideas of where else people might be able to go? Yeah, well, can I just comment on that? Because I want to kind of put this into perspective. I know that you had said that um, this is something that that Val did when mm -hmm. she first moved to Arizona. Um, and she went out and she would hand out all of these invitations. I think where people are like, I'm not going to do that, like move on to the next topic. You know, it's it's like this, you know, the set the goal of just to invite the people. Like, I just have to hand out these hundred invitations. I don't care if anybody shows up. My goal is to hand, it's like the hundred no's. Like, let me hand out these 100 invitations. Um, maybe you get two, three, four six people there but what people don't realize is that you don't like they automatically take that as a defeat like oh i handed out a hundred nobody wants to come this business isn't going to work but ha for those of you who have done in-person parties how many of you have been surprised about like sandy parties that you were like there's four to six girls maybe she thought she was gonna have 20 and all of a sudden there were only four and it was still like a 1600 hundred dollar party and you're like it you know and you booked three more parties so i just I want to kind of take that away from people to see that it's a small amount that can really um, grow. Um, you say, so you wanted to ask me what other places can you go to yeah. get people? Yeah, sure. you know, So, and this might make people feel better. Like if, if you don't want to go out and like people, like complete strangers handing this out, like you feel like you're handing stuff out at, at the mall, which totally, I mean, I remember Dana saying like walking down the mall and handing stuff out like flyers, like, you know, until she got caught. I did this actually at a movie theater. They um, didn't um, want us to have a, a table for Fifty Shades of Grey. So I was like, well, I'm going to buy tickets and I'm going to sit in the audience. I'm going to wait till it starts. And then we're going to go around and hand out goodie bags. And I booked a party. Like I put a coupon in there. She had to call me in 24 hours and she booked a party and it was a fantastic party. Um, but go to places that like you have relationships with. So it's at least like this acquaintance, like, you know, whether it's somebody that you always do business with, you know, maybe you always go to a local bar or your hair salon or, uh, you know, uh, the place that you get your lashes done and get, you know, your tanning girl and give it to these people because then it, then you don't feel so awkward. Like this is somebody that you have some kind of connection with and also you're supporting them in business and they can help support you in business. Exactly. Exactly. And I saw a comment, you know, people not feeling necessarily comfortable doing it at your house. Restaurants have private rooms, you guys. Bars have private rooms. Um, look into your local businesses and see if they do ladies' nights and see if you can, especially if you already do business with them on a regular basis, just like Lauren said, like have that reciprocation work back and forth in your favor. Because if you're always going to a hair salon, for example, well, guess what? After hours, she can close that down. She owns the place. She's got all these chairs. She's got all this space. And you've got private rooms available. So you can absolutely do these things. It doesn't ask us, you know, don't get caught up in the idea of always at your house, just your party, right? Like kind of open up the mind a little bit as to think a little bit outside the box other than what we're just exactly telling you. Um, so there are documents out there and we can post this into the group if we can bump it up there. I'm sure it's in here somewhere, but there's 100 ways to book a party, right? So the one thing that I, when I moved several times, um, I was going through that list and picking maybe two or three options out of that list and really focusing on those for a month, two months at a time and really making those my main goals. Because if you bounce around and you say, all right, I'm going to try this today. I'm going to try this tomorrow. I'm going to try this. You don't know which one's working. And you didn't get good enough at any one of those options to absolutely see that it's going somewhere or that you're going to get any results from it. Um, there is a document called 40 Yes in Four Minutes that we would also recommend you fill out. And basically what that is, it's a memory jogger. It's going to remind you of people that you may know that you know, but you forgot that you know. Um, because here's the thing, you guys, you got to expand outside of your circle and you've got to start looking at your acquaintances. So for those of you who are new to this business, for those of you who are only been in the virtual side of it since the pandemic started, your friends and family love you. You love them. But I'm going to promise you right now, they're not going to help you 
<laughs> like they're just not. Um, and we love them for who they are as people. But most of the time, your friends and your family are not going to be the ones that completely make your business run. Lauren, would you agree? Yeah. I mean, I think what's really important for us to point out are these moments of like where you feel defeated. Because again, I think that's where people quit and they give up and they think that this business isn't going to work. And they think that you and I and the Heather Pillows and the Dana Barishes that we had a million friends who wanted to have a, a party with us. And 14 years of business one of my friends has ever had a party for me and that is it. And that kind of blows people's minds. And I'm an introvert. I don't have a million friends that I would have been able to really pick from anyway. Acquaintances definitely are so much more important because I feel like when you're somebody's friend, the reason it's not that they don't want to help you. They're like, Oh, I'm her best friend. And if I do this once, she's going to ask me again and again and again and again, and she's going to expect me to buy from her every week. And I'm just going to, so they kind of almost like avoid it like the plague. Right. Mm -hmm. But also I find that friends and family, they want discounts. Like they, Oh, well, why do I have to pay shipping? Or can I get a discount? Is there a deal? Can I get this for free? Like, no, it costs me money. Like I'm building a business, you know? And if you think of any other business that you start, if you started a salon, if you, you know, I mean, whatever, like you aren't just going to do business. You said realtor, like a realtor, not every single per. Did you say that? I think yes. that you said that. Like is every, um, everybody in your life going to want to buy and sell a home. That's not true. You have to go out and find people. But for some reason, we never, we like, we don't apply those same rules. We, you you get your real estate license and you know that it takes work. You get your cosmetology license. You know it takes work to build, to build that clientele. But for some reason, if it doesn't happen with us in 30 days, like we think that this business just must have failed. Right, exactly. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's the same thing. If you open a restaurant, if you open a coffee shop, the only people that are going to come and support your business are not your friends and your family, guys. Like they're just not. You're going to have to get clients. And the good thing with that is that you get to keep your friends and family relationships separate from your business relationships because there's nothing messier than crossing those lines um, and crossing those lines. It does get messy. And like Lauren said, I want a discount on this. I want free this. No, like you can't do that. And it keeps those boundaries and those relationships separate. So it's actually better that you're not yeah. doing business with your friends, or your family, to be completely honest. Um, and I know Lauren mentioned the 100 no's list. So kind of can you kind of expand and tell people what that actually is? Yeah, absolutely. And let me just expand on that really quick. So maybe your friends are not the people that are going to have the party, but use them as a resource. Mm -hmm. So one of my best friends, like she was going to have a party with me. She totally flaked out. Like, again, they're like, oh, she'll understand. She's my friend. And she flaked out on me. And I was like, well, your roommate looks really cool. I don't know her. <laughs> um, how about she has a party? And she's like, okay, well, I'll ask her. To this day, I mean, that was, I mean, 10 years ago, I still have business. I have a, a big team leader off of that party. Like, you just don't know. Like, look for the, again, like the referrals, the acquaintances, like, where's the connection? You know, that one friend that did have a party for me, all of her friends that were there, like, we were, again, acquaintances. And that's where I built a lot of my business. Um, but the hundred no's, um, people think, again, that we hear well, everybody must say yes to Lauren and Sandy. Like it's so easy. You you ask people and everybody says yes and they all want to have a party with you and that's not true. We hear no um, just as much, actually more than you do. It's just that we're asking more people and it doesn't hurt our feelings when somebody says no. So when you remove the goal of, I mean, I, I, can, I, mean, I can compare it to this. Like if you if you have this goal, I think every woman can think about, you know, diet and exercise and stuff. And you have this goal number of this is where I'm going. And you get on the scale every day and you're like really concentrating on it. You like stress yourself out and like, I'm never going to get there. Da, 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 right. But when you're like, you know what? I just want to be healthy. I don't really care about this number on the scale. I'm just going to go through the process. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to commit to the process attached from the outcome. And then all of a sudden you're like, where did this happen? It just seems like it happens. The same thing with the go for no. So I just want to hit a hundred no's. I'm just going to keep asking. My goal is to get no, because we know no is easy. It's really hard to get a hundred no's because for so many no's, you're going to get yeses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe that hundred no's, maybe you get five yeses, but that's five opportunities to meet. I mean, there's, let's say there's five women at each of those parties. Let's just lowball it. You know, that's 25 new women. That's a, a potential of how many more parties, you know, and different groups of people that you're getting into. 
Exactly. It's all exponential growth and getting into different groups of people. I mean, there's a million ways to do that. And so we're going to kind of give you some ideas. Um, vendor events, you know, yes, they took a hiatus during the pandemic, but they are back. Uh, I know next weekend for us, the home show is coming up. We've got bridal expos coming. Um, people are getting out. So bridal shows are going to be your best friends. And how do you find these? So you can go ahead and go vendor events, same thing. You can search through Facebook even and put your town vendor events or your town business connections or whatever. Vendor events are happening constantly. Now, there are going to be the ones that you probably hear of in your area, like the big, huge ones that take an entire weekend are open from eight in the morning till 10 o'clock at night, three days or a weekend. Like, and those are going to be labor intensive and huge and cost a lot of money. And there's also going to be these little small ones that pop up maybe for three or four hours one day on a weekend are not going to cost as much money, are not going to bring in the same number of crowds, but you're still going to make connections. Now, you can decide which one of those types of events you might feel most comfortable doing. Um, you know, obviously, you're going to get more bang for your buck out of the bigger ones. But if your budget only allows you to do a smaller one, I mean, I've booked so many different parties from those small vendor events because you can take the time and get the relationship and talk to these women and really you know, have them excited that they're having a party rather than you've got 25 people in front of you. You're trying to just like work crazy back and forth and get these people through. Um, Lauren, what have you experienced with that kind of stuff? So when I took my business full time, so 2014, when Pure Romance um, bought Slumber, I had had the conversation about going full time literally the month prior. Um, I think I'm going to sneeze. I apologize. I started to book vendor events like back to back to back again. Like everything is a, is a numbers thing, whether it's how many people you ask, how many events that you do. I mean, so I started to do these vendor events. Um, sometimes I got none. Sometimes I got one. Sometimes I got 10 and I've done, but I'll say that that litter within, again, I had a lot of clientele prior to this. I had been doing the business for several years, but I, I, that was January, June is when I quit my job and took this full time. It was a huge catalyst in expanding my clientele out of the already existing group that I had. Um, but I also did everything from a bridal event, which they tend to be expensive, but I did bridal events. I did fall festivals. I did Christmas events. I, I mean, random like events, like my neighbor worked at a, a Yamaha dealer and had me sit outside at some car event that they had. And I was like, okay, whatever. Like, and I booked parties off. It was the most random thing. Um, and it's just about making those connections and collecting those people's info, which I find is so much easier now because we used to put them on paper cards <laughs> and have to like, actually, you know, go through and enter all that information. I now have them do Google form. I have a QR code and they do a Google form and I'm collecting all of their information at once, you know, um, and it's, and it's not like trying to figure out their phone number. Um, but yeah, I mean, so much. I, the most recent one I did was a beer, um, a beer fest. We had a table to beer fest. And again, me and a girl split it, which is also, um, a really good idea if you have something that's a little bit more expensive split it um i booked two parties off of that and they have both majorly expanded into a um, really good opportunities more parties great sales um i'm actually partnering with one in the one of the breweries to do events at her brewery which is really cool i mean they've got uh, my local gym does ladies events and so, same thing they'll set up tables right in the gym and you can set up right there and get people's information. And again, it's going to be people who either have a connection to somebody else there, they're with their friend working out at a brewery, they're with their friend hanging out. And from one friend talks, the other one is just like, I'll come to your party, we'll invite this one, this one, this one. And all of a sudden, they've already planned the party and you're just putting the date in the calendar. So yeah, that kind of stuff works so incredibly well. And you can use those for just getting client contact information as well. And in order to do that, I know people get hung up on how do I even get people to fill out their information? I always say you're getting entered in for a gift card, or a gift basket, um, a gift certificate, whatever it's going to be. Maybe it's $100, whatever it happens to be. And then afterwards, what I do, and I don't know if Lauren, if you do the same thing, is I'll go through, of course, I pull the winner. 
But everybody else who sent their information, I will say, you, I decided to pull a secondary winner and you won. Um, and it goes to everybody. And at that point, they're saying, you're going to be able to get a free party and you're going to get $25, $50, whatever it happens to be, yes. um, extra as a free gift for hosting a party. Well, guess yeah. what? They're probably going to get that amount of money anyway from the sales of their party. So yay, we won. Um, and you didn't have to give anything major away. And it's just another reason for you to reach out and contact the people that you did meet at that affair. So don't feel like you can only have one winner and then you're done. You're never going to contact these people again. No, no, no. Once you get those contacts, they go in your database and you absolutely follow up with them. Lauren, have you done anything kind of similar? Yeah, I do the same exact thing. I reach out to every single person and I offer some kind of something that they won, you know, it wasn't maybe the grand prize, but yeah, a, a, a definitely. And what's the worst case scenario? They can say no. And then you're like, okay. You know, another um, thing I've been doing, not only ha do I have them filling out like that Google form and they have a QR code and they fill it out um, to get entered into the drawing, but I do have them joining my, um, so like my Facebook then and there also, because Here's the thing, when we hear no, this is something else everybody should know, we think it's like a no is a final answer and it's not, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't mean never because that person might get onto your social media and be like, okay, I met Sandy at this winery, like, I don't know, I wasn't really interested, but then they follow Sandy for two months, three months and like, she's really fun and you know what, all of a sudden an opportunity pops up, like a birthday, a bachelorette, something like, wait, I know somebody who does this. And then they'll reach out to Sandy. So it's just making that connection. It might take two, three, you know, four months, a year or, or whatever. But that's the whole thing. It, it's yeah. using those contacts and continuing doing that. And the longer that you do this, the more contacts you have. Um, and that's the, th the most random things will happen when you've got the contacts. And that's the thing I think like back we just you said at the beginning, Lauren, was people say a month in, oh, this isn't working. Well, guess what? I had a woman on New Year's Eve message me and she's like, Hey, are you doing in-person parties? I want to have one in February. I haven't seen her in four years. So yeah. just because I, she stayed on my contact list, you know, I've got 7,000 contacts on that contact list. So when I send out a text blast, when I send out an email, um, my name stays in front of these women. So they don't have to sit there and go, Oh, I met somebody three years ago. I can't remember yeah. her name. Let me just go Google somebody else. Like you've got to stay in, in front of all these women at all times. And then when they have a reason to have a party that comes up this girl's having her birthday um they think of you and they're like i yeah. want to do this and i want to do it with her and there's different options you guys like you don't how they have to do birthdays but i mean we've got a list of bachelorette yeah. parties god bachelorette parties yes we should all be doing those and those bridal expos i know what i usually do is i say you know they'll they'll come to the bridal event two years three years before their wedding right like that always happens you're like well that's not gonna do me any good so what you say to them is let's do a trial party ahead of time so you can see what it's about so that when your wedding comes we can actually do the real one then but you can have like a little one right now and we can have that happening so don't like let those things go oh my god it's so far out okay great like we'll change that topic around um birthday parties god i always tell them this is a good one too because most people when they're you know especially get married later in life. Um, if this isn't your five best friends from high school, you probably have a friend from school, high school, a friend from college, your sister-in-law, you know, your coworker, whatever. These, this is a group of women that don't know each other. I said, this is a great opportunity to get all of your bridesmaids together to kind of meet. And like, it's a pre like engagement, whatever, get to know the bridal party type of party. Exactly. And it's so smart yeah. to do it that way because those walls come down and they start laughing and all of a sudden they've got friendships made within that bridal party so that it's not awkward when the wedding does come. So it's yeah. perfect. It's like such yeah. a perfect. You want to, um, I know where we, I, I'm watching time and we're going, we have so okay. much to go through. Do we oh, want to yeah. go through this like list and yeah. then kind of maybe move on to some social media and stuff? So Absolutely. I know that you said bachelorette, birthday, like think of any kind of theme party, um, divorce parties, um, Valentine's Day, Galentine's Day, getting lucky in March, St. Patty's Day party, um, Mardi Gras parties, fundraisers. I've done a ton of fundraisers like for, I mean, personal things. Like I did one for a client of mine who got in an accident and, and you know, this was for um, her medical funds. I've done them for a soccer team 
Like, listen, people don't want wrapping paper. They want sex toys and they're going to get a lot more money. I know um, one woman wanted to, she was in the process of adoption. And yeah. she and so I was like, well, for your hostess credit, I'll just cut you a check. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, let me tell you, she, because she had a tie to that cause. Oh, yeah. she was hustling. I think we did like a $3,000 party for that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think you can do it for anything. Yeah. Um, uh, sororities and college um, parties. Right now, like the, I use these for my Monday through Thursday parties. Um, the great thing, because I think a lot of time people are like, well, they don't have money. They don't, you know, they're they not really good clients. A, first of all, they get older and they get married and they, they get jobs and, you know, um, they just spend money with you. Um, Monday, you know, they are great to do last minute because they can book a party for next week. They don't have to arrange sitters and um, you know, whatever, cleaning their, yeah. they don't care. I mean, you go to a college party and I'm like, Oh, maybe you could have cleaned the bathroom a little bit, but, um, they're your great Monday through Thursday parties. Like I don't give them a Saturday night because I'm going to leave that open and a Sunday morning brunch, dildos and donuts or whatever muffins and mimosas. I leave them open for my moms that they can't get their kids out at seven o'clock at night. Cause their kids bedtime is seven 30. Um, but I mean, anything that you can think theme wise, uh, somebody told me that they did like a Harry Potter party. I guess there's a, there's a new Harry Potter thing coming out too. Like, and everybody dressed up and they had their, I mean, people are, I, we just yeah. love food party. I mean, sex in the city is back. Like, you know, a sex in the city themed party. Like, yeah, yeah we get totally. excited about it. And the stay at home mom parties. I mean, next Monday, I have a party at noon on a Monday. Mm -hmm. because it's women whose kids are back in school and they are a bunch of women who are going to be home during the day. By the time I'm done, their kids won't even be home from school yet. And off I go and I'm, I made money in three hours on Monday afternoon. So it's going to be yeah. perfect. So think about those kind of things that you can kind of get out of the regular thought of Friday or Saturday night parties. There's a ton of different ideas. Um, personal consultations. If you guys have never done one of these, it's so smart because you're going to have women who, especially like the waitress, right? Let's just go back to Luanda's class. The waitress at that restaurant, she's like, I don't even know what this is. And I don't know if my friends would like it. And, you know, X, Y, Z. Okay. Well, why don't we do it at your dining room table, invite two or three of your friends over. We'll just kind of go through some stuff and I'll tell you what some stuff is and they can shop if they want. You just booked a party, you guys. <laughs> yeah. Think about this, Sandy. So like that, I wanted to say this, like we feel like one size fits all because people see this business and they're like, well, I'm a single mom. I can't leave my children. I have no babysitters. I, you know, what, whatever their, you know, um, reason is, you know, and these, these are truths for them. Like, we're not going to say like, well, you'll figure it out and you'll find somebody, you know, cause some people really don't. My best friend lives in Vegas with zero family. Like she's like, we don't go anywhere. Like, and a babysitter is really, really expensive. Um, so yeah, like, why do we think that it has to be a Friday night at seven o'clock? It can be, like you said, a daytime, a personal consultation, small people. And what if we started to promote these instead of just saying book a party at a, when we're booking at parties, you know, or personal consultation? Because somebody might be like, oh, well, I can't have a party, but I'll do a personal consultation. And like you said, now it's a party because they can invite their two or three friends over to sit down at that personal consultation. Like you make it work for you. People have made virtual parties work for them. They've made in person. They've made, um, so I, I, there's probably a good part to mention this. I talked about a girl on my team that she has the same issue. It's like, it's not the party itself. It's the travel. It's the packing of the car. It's the getting home late. If this is something that you're comfortable with, she has set up a party space in her home where she invites um, the, the hostess comes, she brings all of her snacks and goodies and she invites all her friends. They come, they do the party. Her daughter goes over to the neighbors for the night. She can come back early. Like she's still in bed by her bedtime. Um, you know, so if that's something you're comfortable with and I know, um, Sandy, you had mentioned this too, just be careful. The only thing is that now the, the liability is it, that it is your home. So you might want to limit or take away the opportunity to have alcohol at an event like that, because yes, you are inviting strangers into your home again, not for everybody, but this, for this girl on my team, like this immensely works for her. She's like, I've found my niche. 
great. There's nobody said, I mean, and COVID taught us that, that there's not one way to run this business. We pivot and we pivot into what works for us. I mean, I did that before the pandemic hit too. And I was allowing people to use my house and how amazing it was for them to show up. I mean, I, my house is clean all the time. It's fine. They use my dining room. And then we went into my office where all of my stuff is. We shopped and they were out of my house by like 8, 830. Like, it's amazing if you can do something like that. And I know that it doesn't work for everybody, but I know that there's a consultant in Ohio, Christina, and I cannot remember her last name, um, but she rents out a space and she has just like a little office space in an office building. And she has that set up as her party room, same thing. And that's what she offers. Now I'm not saying that's going to work for everybody, but it's not, I mean, it's absolutely something that can be done. And again, people just gather, it's not their house. They don't have to get their kids out of the house. It's an option, you guys. Um, yeah. All right, so let's kind of bump over to social media and kind of talk about some ideas because I know it's easy to do things on Facebook. And I also know that people get super disappointed when things do not work the way they thought it would. So the ideas we've given you guys so far, those, yes, do they require some work? Absolutely. Are they gonna generate you good results? Absolutely. Putting a post on social media, it's a lot easier, but it means you're gonna have to do a lot more work right? Like no matter what it is in this business, you're going to have to work for it. So no matter what it is, if you put one post up one time, you're not going to see like parties flooding on into you. It just doesn't happen that way. Um, but we're going to give you some ideas because when you do a lot of this on a consistent basis, that's when the results start to flow in. Um, so posts that are vague. Lauren, why don't you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So I have booked a ton of parties from social media. And again, we keep going back to this once if we hear no, we want to give up and we want to quit. So every single thing, always remember, it comes back to numbers. So A, how many people like do you have in your social media on your, and that's why when you go places like get people into your VIP group, get them in at your parties, get them at vendor events, get them in, you know, as you start your business, start inviting your friends, telling them to invite friends, right? Because now you're pulling from more people. So I'll make a post and it's, a um, you, you know, so. I'll make a post about booking a party. Um, we feel like if we post it once and nobody responds that all of a sudden, like nobody wants to have a party and I suck and blah, blah, blah. And we have these like self-defeating things, right? Maybe it's the, we know the algorithm. Maybe it was the algorithm. Maybe it was the offer. Maybe some people weren't interested in the offer. Maybe it was the time of day. Like nobody saw it. Like you have no idea. So I did this like trial. I feel like this was like two summers ago where I was posting like on a Monday, a Wednesday, a Friday, different times and different deals. And some of them, I got no reaction. Some I got two, some I got like 50 and I make them super vague. So if anybody remembers, if you guys been in a while, when we came out um, with the different colors of the woke up like this, I posted like the purple one and the blue one, like which one would you pick for free comment below? Um, and people were commenting. So again, I didn't say about book a party. I didn't say like too much information sometimes is just too much because then they don't have any reason to inquire. So all of these people commented um, and I would send a message to them. Like I would respond, you know, inbox you and I say something different, send you a direct message, check your messages, whatever. But I would message them and say, you know, like, hey, Sandy, I saw your comment on my post about the woke up like this. Here's the deal. Um, you can score this for free at your own girls night out party or whatever. I'm giving five of these away. Um, would it be okay if I send you my hot open dates? Would it be okay if, if you guys want to look it up, Big Al Schreider um, talks about marketing language specifically to network marketing and things that people say yes to and people say no to. It's like marketing research says like 97% of people say yes to that phrase. Would it be okay if... Right. So it, I, the first time I tried it, I was like, no way is this real. Um, people say, yes. Yeah. So I have now incorporated that into my language. Would it be okay if I send you my hot open dates and bonuses? Would it be okay if I send you an invite to my VIP group? Would it be okay if I send you more information on the business? Right. So you, you insert that, but posting, um, like these vague things, like which toy would you want for free? Use the sales specials um, or uh, what do you uh, pick a number and, you know, for a bonus body boost. I do body boost for six months, coochie for a year. Um, you know, what, what else um, are ones that you've done, um, Sandy? Birthday messages, you know, having, sending them a birthday message because you've got a captive audience and new people in front of you 365 days a year. So you can message people and say, hey, happy birthday. 
um, as a birthday gift, I offer $50 extra at your party if you're going to have a party within the next four weeks. And okay, maybe they say yes, maybe they say no, but again, you just boosted yourself up in their in their space. Would it be okay if I sent you my day, my open dates for having a girls party? Um, gosh, that, that stuff happens and they are gonna wanna get their girls together anyway for a birthday party. And you can look ahead at that, you can look back at that. I mean, you can go and your Facebook is gonna let you know every single day when people's birthdays are. So it's not like you're saying, hey, everybody send me if you've got a birthday in January, because only, like you said, algorithm wise, how many people really see that post? Yeah. You're going to get that list fed to you every single day by Facebook, which is amazing. Yeah. So Wait, doing you, you could do both because you could make a post and be like, who has a birthday in February? I have something special for you. Comment below and they'll comment. And then you reach out to them and you reach out to the other people. It's pulling from different sources. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. It's just doing the same stuff consistently because if you do yeah. this stuff once, and you know you never do it again you're not going to see the results but the people who have the booked and solid calendars we do this stuff consistently every single day week month and this is how our calendars stay full um partnering with other small businesses gosh guys like you can look and like laura mentioned the brewery or the gym that i mentioned um i did a party at a i paired up with um a group of girls they were doing a piercing party because here's the thing like laura and i were talking when we were planning this class Okay, well, so and so is getting pierced. Where everybody else has got to wait their turn until somebody else is done with their piercing or their Botox or whatever it happened to be. And what are they all doing out there while they're waiting for their turn to go in? Well, guess what? I am doing with that. And then the other girl, one girl leaves, the other girl comes back. Yes, it's a little just a disruption, absolutely, but it gives them something to do. And guess what? They are going to go ahead and shop with you anyway. And they just had a great time with their girlfriends. Um, partnering up with anything that you can think of like that, the brewery, the local bars. I did a, um, so for college and you guys don't think that it has to be like, cause I know when Laura and I were playing this class, we were thinking the liberal co colleges. It wasn't, it's a very conservative college in Maine. I did, um, a toy bingo and it was virtual. So I'm in Arizona, they were in Maine. And so they would do a bingo round. And then the, in between each round, I would do a little bit of sex ed information of like lubricants or how to take care of your toys. And again, this is college. So we're talking, you know, that they don't have a lot of this experience. And at the end of it, all the prizes for all the rounds, the woman who coordinated this, she bought them all for me. And then I sent out business cards and catalogs afterwards. And I've gotten orders since then from these people who I've never would have met any other way. So you can partner up with a million different options. So contact like their health department, their student affairs, resident living, find out if they have these types of events that you can partner up with them on. They're like, they love that. They don't have to go search for somebody. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. All right. So, go ahead. No. Yeah. No. Absolutely. I, I totally agree. Um, so we're going to start to talk about like now at the party, booking parties at the party, and um, we talked about this, uh, Sandy. That I always say I'm not a one night stand, and I tell them that at my party. I'm, I'm pretty sure I got that from Kelly Ellis Neal. Um, uh, I'm not a one night stand. I'm going to be your pure romance girl for life. Um, Every party that you do, every event, whatever, um, you, it's an audition for your next party. So if you are somebody that's doing parties and you never book parties, you got to go back. We, we like to point fingers and like, nobody wants to book with me. And every time you point a finger, you have three fingers pointing back at yourself. What can you change? You can't change other people, but you can change yourself. Have somebody be honest with you. Are you funny? Are you engaging? Are you bringing value? Are you um, educating? Like what, what is it that's making them want to see you again do they understand the value in having a party they do they know what they're getting for free um get into the habit which remind me later i'm going to talk about i, I can just mention two really good books because we talk about habit and consistency that i think were the best things for my business ever um but playing a consistent booking game guys we could sit here and talk about i, I feel like we could talk about booking games over like forever like there's a million of them really do, does one work better than the other? No, you just find the one that, that you like. That's fun. Anything. They get a bonus. The hostess gets a bonus, whatever. Like it doesn't need to be fancy. You don't need to sit here and bedazzle things and waste your time and think that it has to be something ridiculous and over the top. Um, but there are three reasons they want to book that party. And what are they? Sandy Main reasons that people book parties with you and you've got to touch on all of them because you're going to get different personalities that are going to jive with that one. Um, the number one reason people book parties is going to be the fun of it because they had fun. They laughed. This wasn't a boring presentation. This wasn't like, this is coaching. 
this is body do like that's not going to be a fun party for them so make it fun and come up with a joke so don't have to have a joke for every single product but have those stories that go in and jokes and, and keep them engaged for the entire time that you're talking because you don't want them zoning out the second reason is they get free stuff at having a party i always mention to people i'm like you know what how many of you your wish list you're doing some mental math in your head and you're freaking out a little bit um and i make a joke out of it. i'm like i know not all of you want to spend three thousand dollars for me tonight it makes me sad but I understand. So if your wish list is longer than your budget, my recommendation is that you book a party because it's going to be free. You're going to get free stuff. My average hostess gets $180 or whatever it is for your average. Um, and explain to them in dollars what they're, don't say 10% and then you get enough. How much money are they getting for free? Like that's what they need to know. That's what the average is. And then the third thing, so fun, free stuff, and it's helping their hostess. Right? It's going to help their hostess. So whatever your booking special is, I do it where if the hostess gets three parties booked and held. Once they all three hold, she gets another $100 in goodies from me. Um, do three parties book and hold all the time? No. So that goes back on the original hostess. But again, like don't feel like you're going to be putting out a ton of money that way. But if two of them hold, I'm still super happy about that um, because that's where your party, your business is going to grow exponentially. And that's where it's going to jive on out a little bit. So again, every party though, it's an audition for your next job. You guys, you've got to come in and you've got to be fun and you've got to be funny. If you've got a million things going on in your life, either leave it at the door or find somebody else to cover the party if you really can't. Yeah. Like if it's really weighing on you, you can't, you're not going to get anywhere. I'm going to promise you right now. I think Laura and I both have done parties at some point in our 16, 15 year career where our life was not always amazing when we walked into that door. Like there was going to be times where things have happened. Um, yeah. And sometimes you can push through it, and sometimes you can't. I mean, I had a party one day, like it's medicine for me. It makes me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> I had a party one day, like the party once I'm there, like I feel really good. Oh, good, yeah. And sometimes you absolutely can. And I had one party one at one point where, like, three hours beforehand, my dog died. Like I could not push through on that party, so I gave it away. You have to know that where the space is going to be, where you can still deliver a really good experience for your clients and where you're not in that good headspace anymore. Um, so keep that back. And people buy you. Like, are you fun and educational and entertaining? Like, they want to do business with you. And the one thing that I'm going to say is, please be true to who you are. Don't feel like you have to do, like, if you see these online parties or you see, like, examples of a different consultant who is completely, let's just say she's super, super outgoing and extroverted and she does, like, all these funny things and she's on the floor showing you how to do the sexy spreader and, I'll, and you're like that is so not my personality please don't fake it um just don't do it if they don't feel like it's comfortable for you it's okay like please be who you are because people see through that kind of stuff they know if you're being you or if you're faking so just be genuine to who you are absolutely so I, i'm gonna go through this um this way we have a few minutes for questions um real quick um Sandy. So um, like we talked in the beginning, information is key. Make sure you're getting everybody's information. I do a Google form. They have a QR code. Um, they're filling out all their information, name, address, phone number, email, all of that, including are you interested in a party? Are you interested in the business? And because it's all in a Google form, you can then it's an Excel spreadsheet. If you guys aren't familiar and you can you know search how to do this, but you can sort because when I'm looking for parties, I'm like, OK, who said maybe interested in a party um <clears throat> when they come in the ordering room whether i played this this booking game and they got some bonus i still ask every single person about booking a party mm -hmm. um i always have an open date card and my open date card does not have like it's not my calendar that they're going through keeping your parties in close and short are really like like in a short time span is really important and on my open date card i will have like dates highlighted in pink purple blue you know any of the dates that you pick in pink, you get a triple bonus. So maybe their card was $20, so you can lower it so that it sounds, so it's not as much in the end, but it sounds good, triple. Triple bonus for these dates, double bonus for these dates, regular bonus for these dates, right? Um, and I tell them, you know, my best parties are seven to 10 days out, which they truly are. Like nobody has a time to forget. Like if you found out you had off on Friday, you could probably get a couple girls to come over for happy hour. Like, um, they really, really are great parties um, booked close in. And everybody knows when they're doing this week. Yeah. So when you're condensing your parties, so again, everybody's going to run their calendar 
different. If you're like, well, I only want to do one party a month or I only want to do two or three, that's fine. But then, you know, if you have your goals have to match your work or your work has to match your goals, I guess. So like if you want to bring in $5,000 a month, because this is going to be a full-time income, you have this debt, whatever, whatever you, you can't have goals of that. You're going to do two or three parties a month, you know, but if you have, if you want to bring in big money, you condense them. So I would do three, four, five parties in a weekend when I was running this business to bring it full time. But what is cool, like, was that an exhausting weekend? Yes. But mm -hmm. say I did four parties that weekend and I booked three parties at each of those parties. That's now 12 more parties that I've just added to my book, probably within the next 30 to 60 days. Maybe if you even do that a couple times, it'll just like start to pack your calendar. You know, I say it's like compounded interest. I worry about, you know, January and December, you know, I worry about, you know, I'm still booking January now, even though it's January, like you don't think that you have to book 30 to 60 days out, confirm your parties within 24 to 48 hours. Um, the longer you wait, the, the more likely they're going to forget. They forget how much fun, like you want to catch them when they're on their, that high of that party. So reach out to them and, and get that party on the books. I'll reach out, you know, maybe twice. The third time I tell them that I'm opening it, you know, that I'm, if they haven't gotten back to me, I just say I'm opening up out of courtesy for my other clients. And I open that date back up because sometimes I'll be like, oh my God, I totally forgot. I just was like, you know, ignoring your message. And I just like assumed that, that we would be at their back and call, but you're setting your boundaries that you are a real business. Um, and I mean, in all honesty, let's just make clear there are going to be cancellations. Yeah. It's just a reality. So let's just say that you want to hold, and I'm going to use a round number because it makes my life easier. So let's say you want to hold 10 parties a month. Well, if you want to hold that many, you've got to book 13 to 15. you got to book 30 to 50% more than you actually want to hold. Again, if you want to hold five, then you want to hold, you want to book eight to 10. Um, you want to book a lot more than you actually want to hold. Worst case scenario, worst case, every single party holds, which is never going to happen. But if it does, hey, either you made more money or you can pass those parties off to somebody else if you physically can't do them all. I mean, like you that's worst case scenario. Best case scenario, you just made more money than you planned on. Um, there's nothing wrong with any of that. So don't feel like you're always gonna be like, oh my God, I have to, now I've just done these four parties, now I have 12 and oh my God, what am I gonna do from here? No, you're gonna go ahead and do that kind of stuff maybe once or twice a year when you really need to amp up your calendar. Hi, Heather. Hi. Okay, so I don't know about everybody watching, but that was like jam packed with good ideas. So um, a couple of questions and a couple of uh, points. Yes, I would like to reiterate what you guys said towards the beginning about hosting your own party. I, I am going to say to everyone watching, you can't ask someone to do what you are not willing to do yourself. Exactly. So don't ask people to host a party if you're not willing to host one yourself. Plus, if they don't really understand what goes into it, then they don't know what they're committing to. So when you show them how to do it and keep the snacks light and don't go crazy, it makes it really achievable. So host your own. I know Danny Todd, when she started the business, she's a rock star partner out of Utah. She hosted her own party every single month for six months until her party schedule got to where she wanted it. And she had parties outside of her home. So there's no downside to that. Um, and I also want to share that my two oldest friends in the entire world have never hosted a party for me in 16 years of business. So you're okay. absolutely right. Friends and family, not going to make you rich, man. They'll support you from afar, but that's about as good as it's going to get. Okay. So, um, I would love to know how you all track your leads. So you've got people that say maybe later, or you have all these people that you're meeting at these events that you do. How are you keeping track of those people and thus using those leads in the future? So I am super, super old school, Heather, and I have just a paper calendar. And this is from the dollar store. You guys don't feel like you have to <laughs> spend a whole lot of money. But in the notes section, I write down so-and-so wants a party in March. So when I open up March, I've got the list of people that say, this is who's going to, wants to book a party in this month. And I can go ahead and immediately have a list of people that I'm going to reach out to for that month. Um, so for people who say, yes, I want to have one, but I'm not going to book a party when it's January, I'm not going to book them into July at this point. Like it's not going to happen. I'll just say when I open my calendar for that month, that's when I will reach out and contact you. Um, because like Lauren said, they're going to forget that they booked this party. And like, that's the last thing you want is I'm sitting on your calendar for six months and then they never actually schedule that party or they, they cancel on you when you get to that point. 
Um, in addition, I do engage. So I am a huge engage follower. Um, with, for anybody who doesn't know, basically it's a CRM system. You enter in all your client information. You can tag people with uh, wants to book a party or whatever else. And when I want to go through, just like Lauren said, with her Google form, I will go ahead and find the tags of those people and just shoot out um, targeted campaigns to those people. Awesome. How about you, Lauren? Um, a couple different ways. So getting their information into that Google form whenever I'm meeting them at a party, because then, like I said, I can store it and it's all in one place. What I also love about having it on a, a Google Drive is it's accessible from anywhere because I can pull it up on my phone. I can pull it up on my computer. I'm also like if I was out and about and like meeting people like I will open. I do this actually with everything pretty much in my business now kind of in my life is like the notes section on your phone, because again, yeah. you can put it on your computer, you can put it on your phone and they, and they connect. So I'll, I'll have like scripts, everything in there, because when I have some time, you know, to reach out with my kids, like at dance class or at swim or whatever, I can go in and quickly pull that up and shoot some messages out to people. So I just have that running list there and I'll take notes. This way I know like, who do I have to, my parties, all my party bookings are on there and I can circle back to people who maybe never got back to me or who said like, not now I'll go back to them. Excellent. Um, when you see your calendar is somehow lighter than you would like it to be, what is your go-to way to fix that fast? I will start with that one. Um, I book out six to eight weeks and I am a calendar aholic. I am completely aware of what my business looks like at all times. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see that six to eight weeks before it actually hits. So I will push the heck out of saying, okay, you know what? I'm going to now offer a hundred dollars in free extra stuff. Um, I'm going to up the ante and there's certain months of the year. And I'm sure Heather and Lauren can agree that I know are going to be challenging months for me. It's May, it's September, it's December. Those three months, I just, it, it's been that way for 16 years. Um, so when those months are coming, I will put in bigger bonuses starting in March for May, starting in, uh, in July for September, just because I know that's coming and like, let's throw that in there. The, the free toy product of uh, the free toy giveaway that corporate did for December part, that was huge. Like my December was huge this year because I was able to say, you know, they were like, I want to have a party after the holidays. I'm like, no, you don't. Cause I'm going to get you a free $150 toy if you book it in December. And then I had parties all the way up to December 20th this year, which is unheard of. Um, so yeah, you just <laughs> want to know and be able to throw out bigger incentives ahead of time so that you know that those are going to, are going to super stay. smart to utilize the corporate incentives. Cause that costs you nothing. It costs me nothing. It's so yeah. How about you, Lauren? I kind of like to go like, like concentrated and hard. So if I'm sitting here and looking, I, I, same, I'm on top of my calendar. And there are times I have not been where I know like, okay, my month fell apart. And I'm like, what did I do? Or what did I not do basically for it to fall apart? Like I didn't do follow up. I didn't do this. Like, okay, how can I fix this? But I'll sit down like, okay, I'm, I'm going to take a solid two, three, four hours, maybe get a buddy, leave your house, whatever's distracting. I'll go sit in Panera and be like, we are just going to book parties. I'm going to go through this hundred ways to book a party. I'm going to make my posts. I'm going to pull up all of my client contacts, search through those Google forms and start to reach out and just kind of almost like my own little mini booking blitz or phone-a-thon right then and there. And I can add 10 parties to my calendar easily, just investing, investing that concentrated time of going really hard. I do love a phone-a-thon. <laughs> It's been a while since we've had those one of those. Good. We need to bring those back. All right, girls, we are out of time, but that was a chock full hour of bookings. Um, nobody has any excuse to walk away from this class and not have a party. If nothing else, you should be hosting your own. So thank you very much for giving your time and your talent. And uh, ladies that are watching, we'll be back with another class here shortly. Bye. Bye, guys.